What's growing on, gardeners? It's Tuesday, April 2nd, and spring has literally blown in here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. On today's video, I'm going to share with you how I will be using inexpensive raised bed garden kits to literally double the amount of food that I'm producing in my yard and garden. This has the potential to change the way you lay out your garden, especially if you live in a small backyard or you can't dedicate a lot of space to gardening beds. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. I'm going to break this video into two segments. The first segment I will show you the raised bed gardening kits that I will be using to double the amount of food that my yard and garden puts out. On the second segment I will actually show you how I'm going to install them to make that happen. And just in advance if you're curious in the exact raised beds that I bought I will place direct links to all of them down in the video description for your convenience. A few years ago, a handful of companies innovated a big change in the raised bed gardening marketplace. Instead of the traditional wooden raised beds that we're used to building and seeing all over the place, they created modular metal raised beds that they claimed were not only lighter, but would last longer. And because they were so easy to assemble and move around, pretty much anybody could build them with no tools. The only downside to them, they were very expensive. So I never pay them any mind because I have plenty of raised beds that are nowhere near end of life. So why would I consider getting a metal raised bed? But just like any good product that has proven itself in the marketplace, once these expensive raised beds started catching on, other cheaper companies came around and started knocking them off. Well, again, the really cheap raised beds weren't really attractive to me either because, again, I have plenty of raised beds. Why would I want to buy some kind of cheap knockoff junk product that isn't going to last me very long? Now, it seems that we have finally hit phase three of the market. We have the great raised beds that are expensive and the cheap junk raised beds. Well, now we have affordable raised beds that are actually really nice. And once I started witnessing these, that got the gears in my head turning. That's when I came across these modular raised beds. Very nice, well-made raised beds for a very affordable price. In fact, I bought all three of these raised beds for less than the cost of one of the premium products, significantly less. This is a six foot by three foot raised bed. The two on the edges are four by twos. They also come in an eight by two, and you can get them in a higher depth as well. These are all 12 inches deep, but they make the 6x3 an 18 inch depth in case you want a deeper raised bed. I also just made a video on the best and most affordable way to fill your raised beds. I will link to that video down in the video description. The raised bed kits come with everything you need and even include a screwdriver, ratchet, and gloves to protect your hands during assembly. Each bed assembles in about 20 minutes. I recommend you install the hardware loosely first so the bed is flexible. Then, once all panels are assembled, go through and tighten the hardware with the included screwdriver and ratchet. Lastly, install the rubber safety cover on top, cut the rubber a little long first, then make the final cut so you don't accidentally cut it too short. And when I say anybody can assemble these things, I really mean anybody can assemble these things. These things make an Ikea chair look like painting the Mona Lisa. They are a piece of cake. And what else is great is how lightweight they are. I can take my two fingers, and I mean these are like nothing. They weigh hardly a thing. So I don't care if you're age 28 or 88, you will be able to move these things around. I am absolutely blown away by the quality of these. I'm so happy the marketplace has finally reached the part where you can actually get really high quality stuff for a very affordable price. These are thick, heavy duty, everything lines up perfectly. Even the rubber safety top actually fits perfectly. Like I said, really nice beds for the money. Pretty much anybody can assemble these, no problem at all in 20 minutes. So now that you see the raised beds that I will be using, I'm going to show you all how I'm going to use them to double my food harvest. My backyard is broken into four different areas. Area number one is my vegetable garden, which is a fenced in confined space where I grow all of my annual vegetables. Area number two is my container garden area, which is delineated with this black fabric weed barrier mat. This is where I keep all of my containers on basically a weed free zone. Designated area number three is where I grow all of my fruit trees. I grow them around the perimeter of my garden in order to maximize space. This perimeter planting allows me to keep them all confined to a small area. That way I can still maximize the amount of open space for area number four. 
Area number four is a wide open backyard lawn, and I need a wide open backyard lawn, both for my dog Dale to be able to run around in and do his zoomies, but also for future resale value. I don't intend to live on this property for the rest of my life, so I need to have a nice big open area to attract a future buyer when that day eventually comes. As much as I would love to fill every square foot with trees and plants, I need the place to be sellable one day. So up until this point, these different areas of my backyard have been segregated. They have not intermixed. So I kind of thought that I was more or less stuck with the growing space that I had. But now, thanks to these new inexpensive raised beds, for the first time ever, I can combine these spaces and get way more food out of my backyard without taking up a single square foot of additional space. If you follow my channel, you know that where I live on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, it just gets too hot in the summer to grow most things. The heat stress becomes intolerable, the plants get diseased, they get stressed out, they get overwhelmed with insects, and then they die. I have to erect shade cloth overhead to protect my plants to keep the stress level down low enough that they can survive most of the summer, but eventually still they succumb. So because of the heat stress, I fail to grow a lot of things out in the open where I live, and I'm confined only to growing in small areas that I can protect with the shade cloth. Several years ago, I ran an experiment where I grew watermelons in 20-gallon fabric grow bags, and I let the vines sprawl all around the weed barrier. And something amazing happened when I did that. I found that they were 100% free of all pests and never got disease. And what I surmised was something about this black weed barrier, maybe it was the way that the texture is, maybe it's the additional heat it attracts during the day, but for whatever reason, no pests would walk across it to my plants. So I got awesome, pest-free, disease-free production. However, there was one little problem, and that's because I confined the big watermelon roots to containers. The melons didn't get all that large. That original experiment was about four or five years ago. Well, the year after that, I decided I was going to double down on my theory. And what I did was I planted my watermelon plants in between this persimmon tree and in between this fig tree. So they were growing in ground without the restriction of the containers, but the vines would still grow out on this weed barrier. And I had the best production I ever had. I had no pests, no diseases, and because the roots were anchored into the ground, the melons were able to get huge. It was the best watermelon year I ever had. This watermelon planting technique was so successful that I planted my melon plants the same way in the same spot last year, and it was a total disaster. One of my plants died, and the others that lived produced terribly. It was the worst watermelon year I've ever had. Well, what happened? Well, I started digging around in the dirt here, and what I found was it's nothing but a balled up knot of that fig tree root and this persimmon tree root. Well, three years ago, the first time I did this, these trees were little. I didn't have all this root mass all over here. So now I can't plant any annuals in this space, and it was a total failure. You see, what I discovered is that planting annual vegetables underneath deciduous fruit trees is one of the smartest things you can do to both save space and to protect them in the hot summer sun. When you plant your annual transplants out in the spring, the shade canopy cover is pretty thin. So the plants grow underneath and they get pretty good sun exposure. But then what happens? The trees fill out during the summer, and then they wind up having a nice forest shade canopy effect on the plant. So the reasons why my watermelon did so well was because they were planted in between the fruit trees, they got shade down by the roots. So the roots stayed nice and cool, but the vines were able to crawl out into full sun and still get the photosynthesis that they wanted during the actual summer. So we had nice cool roots, nice fertile soil, nice happy vines. Everything was working out perfectly. But I figured now that my trees all over my yard are just too big, I just won't be able to do this anymore. I just lost all that planting space. The roots are too much competition for my annuals. And that's when I had my brilliant idea. All of my fruit trees are spaced anywhere from six to eight feet apart. So I'm not really doing anything with this space. Well, now with these really inexpensive raised beds, I can take all of my fruit trees and place a raised bed in between all of them. And I will see so many benefits because I'm able to utilize this dead space that I wasn't doing anything with and just putting down mulch. Well, I can grow in these raised garden beds. That way, the roots of the plants won't have to compete with the tree roots, so the annual vegetables will do well, and then the trees will reward the annual vegetables, because as they grow out during the season, 
the shade of the trees will start comforting the annual vegetables and protect them from the sun. So what I have here is an incredible opportunity where I can grow more food in a smaller space. I can take the spacing of my fruit trees and place a raised bed anywhere I want and then utilize the shade and protection of the fruit trees in the summer to grow more food. It's just absolutely brilliant. You can do this and plant food all over your yard without taking up a single square foot of additional space. These two trees are two of the newest additions to my yard. I have an olive tree on the left and an almond tree on the right. And while they are both self-fertile and semi-dwarfs, they will be two of the larger trees in my yard. So I gave them a more generous eight foot spacing. So I thought to myself, what can I do with this additional space? Well, I bought this larger six foot by three foot raised bed. And I think this would be perfect to place in between the two because, well, right now these trees aren't very large, but they will get a lot larger in a couple of years. So say this year I could grow sweet potatoes in here or something that likes full tropical sun and likes humidity and rainfall. But then as these trees grow and they provide shade canopies, I could grow something like determinate tomatoes or peppers here that benefit from part shade. That will help keep the stress levels lower. It'll keep the disease pressure down. And it's just a great use of space because whereas I would have done nothing with this space. In fact, it would have cost me money because I would have had to have maintained mulch in this whole area. Well, now I can grow vegetables there instead. Then over here is the northwest wall of my house. I've been very neglectful to this part of the property because it only gets about one hour of sun in the winter and two and a half to three hours of sun in the summer. So I haven't been able to plant anything here that would fruit or bloom. There's just not enough sun. So I've mostly ignored it, except I've planted a couple of frost tolerant shade tropicals and also rosemary seems to be doing pretty well here. But I didn't really think I could do much with this side of my house. But now thanks to these inexpensive raised beds, I can hide these in between the landscaping. I can plant another bush right here and I could have an incognito raised bed growing in practically full shade. And here where I live in North Carolina, it gets way too hot in the summer to grow things like cilantro or parsley or brassicas because they bolt. Well here in total shade, I may actually be able to grow these things all summer long. So I can have a little secret garden where I have heat vulnerable herbs growing. And I never thought I could do that until now. So imagine your backyard where every six to eight feet is a dwarf or semi-dwarf fruit tree and then in between them is a raised garden bed. Is that not just the coolest and most efficient use of your garden space that you've ever conceived? And not only are you maximizing the efficiency of your space, but your plants will benefit because they will be growing underneath the shade canopy of each fruit tree when it gets really hot. So they will probably be healthier and more productive and that same shade canopy that is protecting them when it's really hot out in the summer may also protect the plants underneath from the first few light frosts of the fall. So you may get an extended growing season out of the deal too. More productive, happier, healthy plants, better space efficiency, and frost protection. That's an awesome design idea. So I wanted to take this time and share this new garden design idea with you all. Now that these modular raised garden beds are becoming very affordable, they are opening up a whole new realm of possibilities for how we could design our yard and garden. You may never have considered an application like this. I know I didn't, but now that these things are so inexpensive and so easy to assemble, you can stick them anywhere. So even if you have a very small backyard, you can grow a ton more food than you ever thought possible. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you're interested in these raised garden beds, I've placed direct links down in the video description that will take you to them. I think they are awesome and they are an amazing price. The quality is top notch. I am really impressed and I'm probably going to order more. While you're down in the video description, you can click on my Amazon storefront link and that will take you to everything that I use in real life in my garden. So if you want to know what products I use in real life, check out my Amazon storefront. And while you're down there, you can also check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. All right, Dale, I'm going to get that toy from you. All right, let's get it. Whoa, there he goes. Oh, I can't even keep up with him. He's so fast. All right, let's try again. And hey, Dale, look over here. Oh, I couldn't get it. Oh, dad's too slow. Okay, Dale, don't worry. I'm not going to take it from you. I tricked you. Oh, 
Come on, get Oh, he's getting rough now. He's vicious. All right, Dale, ready? Let go. Drop. Drop. Very good. And... Oh, you missed! You missed! You missed! <clears throat> <laughs> Love playing with Dale.